company law unit 1 so company law is not that difficult of a subject it's a bit of easy subject and also the subjects are opted for this time are criminology and victimology and interpretation of statutes so i will be making videos on those subjects and also notes so let's start with the first concept definition of company so the company is defined under section 2 clause 20 of the companies act 2013 as company means a company incorporated under the companies act 2013 or any previous company law so any firm any partnership or any kind of incorporation which is registered under this companies act 2013 is called as company or under any previous company law so the previous company law is 1956 so under the previous company law that is 1956 if it is registered then it is also called as a company according to section 2 clause 20 so case law solomon versus solomon and co limited in common law a company is a legal person or legal entity separate from and capable of surviving beyond the lives of its members so company has a different legal persona or it's a separate legal person from its members and it can survive beyond the lives of its members so even if the members die the company never dies history and development of the company so what is the history and development of the company it has been asked for long question as for 10 marks so what is the history and development of a company so we have two histories first is this english company law history so this is where the company law history begin and then we have indian company law history so the indian history is nothing but an extension of english history first we had uh, the history of english company and from that our history began so for the history and development we have to first write english company law history so in english company law corporations are institutions of a very ancient date so for instance from a very ancient date uh, the companies existed partnership existed corporations existed then modern company law evolved during a commercial revolution so during this commercial revolution in western countries the this company law evolved in the 17th and 18th century corporate could be formed by a royal charter or a special act of a parliament so before there was no company law or no registration under company law if anyone wanted to start a company they will have to take permission from this royal charter royal charter is nothing but the government or the sovereign or king so whoever is the sovereign or the king from those people the, if anyone wants to start a company they will have to take permission from the royal charter and if the royal charter grants permission they could corporate a company or from a special act of a parliament so if a parliament makes any special act then also through that anyone can create a company but this method was really expensive not everyone can afford to create a company by this law then next to meet growing commercial needs large unincorporated partnerships came into existence in corporate form which led to fraudulent promoters causing loss to investing public so what happened since this method was really expensive taking permission from crown so the people started to create partnerships only not companies so partnerships was inexpensive and they can also meet the growing commercial needs so not everyone could afford so they started creating partnerships and since the partnerships are not governed by law any kind of law they started to indulge in fraudulent activities which was causing loss to public then the English Parliament passed the Bubbles Act of 1870 or 1720, Bubbles Act of 1720, which made promoting companies illegal. So, if anyone who wants to promote a company, advertise a company, it was made as illegal in this Bubbles Act 1720. Next, repealed in 1825. So, this Bubbles Act 1720 was repealed in 1825. So, anyone can now advertise their company after repealing. The next is, this is important, the Joint Stock Companies Act. So the Joint Stock Companies Act of 1844 made registration and incorporation of large partnerships compulsory with unlimited liability. So this is where the registration of companies started. 
the company's act things started so first registration under this joint stock companies act of 1844 registration of incorporation of large partnerships was made compulsory so anyone who wants to create a partnership which is large then they will compulsory have to take registration and through with unlimited liability only there was no limited liability in joint stock companies act so if the loss occurs then they will have to pay through their own pocket joint stock companies act then later right to trade with limited liability was granted in 1855 so in 1844 there was unlimited liability registration then in a later in 1855 right to create companies with limited liability was granted then in 1856 law relating to companies was consolidated so only the permission to register companies was given there was no law but how to govern the company how to manage the company there were no laws then later in 1856 they started making laws to for companies then for this 1856 then joint stock companies 1844 we have amendments in 1948 1985 and 1989 so this was the history of english law next history of indian company law so the history of indian company law begins from here the joint stock companies act of 1844 so begins with the joint stock companies act 1850 Amendments to this led to Companies Act 1956. So we, the first Companies Act in the 1956 was nothing but an amendment of the Joint Stock Companies Act 1850. Then operations for business and commerce can still be incorporated by special acts of Parliament. So apart from the registration, even through any special act of Parliament, people can register a corporation. So what is this special act of Parliament? The best example is LIC. So Life Insurance Corporation is not a company; it is a corporation. Why? Because it it is a business. Uh, it is uh, created under Life Insure uh, Act 1956. Business for Life Insurance under LIC Act of 1956. This is created. It is not registered in any company law. It is from a separate statute or of a parliament. That is why it is called as corporation. So institutions created under these are known as corporations. So institutions which are created under special provisions of parliament, special acts of parliament, are called as corporation. And institutions incorporated under the Companies Act are known as company. so this is the basic difference between corporations and company companies are all registered under companies act whereas uh, the, the different corporations are uh, are created through special acts of parliament the next is companies act of 1956 has been replaced with the companies act of 2013 which is present companies act so this is the history and the development of a company law the next question is nature and characteristics or advantages and disadvantages of a company so if the question uh, is asked as nature and characteristics or advantages and disadvantages for both answer is same you try this only it has been asked for 10 marks many times so important question so what are the advantages of an incorporation what are the advantages of creating a company over any kind of partnership So the first advantage is independent corporate existence under section 9 of the Companies Act 2013. They have an independent corporate existence that is it has a different legal distinct legal persona. It exists as an independent member as an independent person and it is totally independent of its members. So even if the members die the company never dies. It is independent totally independent of its members. It has its a different legal entity. Independent corporate existence The next is limited liability. So anyone who go who go, who enters into uh, who registers his company has a limited liability. If loss occurs to their company, then they will not have to pay through their own pocket. Whatever the finance of the company, whatever the capital of the company is there, only through that uh, only through that the loss is paid. The next is perpetual succession. That is a company never dies. transferred or inherited by different persons remains same entity so a company never dies it is a transferred or inherited by different person so if a person dies then their legal heirs inherited or they can transfer it to other person but the company remains as the same entity it never changes separate property so a company is capable of holding a separate property in its own name not on its members name a company can hold a property in its own name 
transferable shares under section 44 of the Companies Act of 2013. So what are these transferable shares? So any person who owns a share can transfer his share without taking any kind of permission from any person not from promoters, not from owners, no one, you have to take permission. If anyone owns a share, he can transfer his share to anyone anytime without taking anyone's permission. Next is capacity to sue and be sued. A company can sue any person in its own name and can be sued to in its own name. So if a company causes a wrong to any person for through its product, then that person cannot file a suit against its members. He will have to file suit in on company only. The members cannot be held responsible. Only the company is held responsible. The next is professional management. So since the company is registered and all, uh, professional people from gradu graduates are taken uh, as an employees. So there is a professional kind of management. Then finances. A company can raise capital by public subscriptions. By selling the shares, it can raise capitals. So these are the advantages of uh, an incorporation. Case law. Solomon vs. Solomon & Co. Limited. Single person Solomon owned a large amount of share with almost 7 other shareholders. It was held as a company. So this single person Solomon, he owned a large amount of share and for the sake of company law, he gave a small, small amount of portion to 7 other members. And it was held as a company, even though he held a, he held a large amount of share. Disadvantages of incorporation. So, what are the disadvantages of a company? The first is lifting the corporate veil. So, this is a very important concept. It has been asked for 10 marks separately many times. Lifting the corporate veil. I, have, I will take this in the next video. So, I will tell in brief what is this lifting the corporate veil here. We saw that uh, whenever a person wants to sue, uh, is wronged by a company, he cannot uh, sue the members. He will have to sue the company only. So this protection to the members who hide behind, a, they are uh, hidden behind a veil, be hidden behind a curtain. So we cannot directly sue the members, we have to sue company only. So this gives an option to create uh, mischief and uh, fraudulent uh, and cause fraud by these persons since they cannot be sued. So this is called a corporate veil since they are hidden behind a veil and that is why lifting the corporate veil is necessary in certain cases so the government has made certain rules where the corporate veil can be lifted and the members can be sued directly so that's what it says company is a legal person but beneficiaries are humans and they can cause fraud formality and expense so registering a company is very expensive method and many formalities whereas a partnership is simple. Company is not a citizen. So not in constitution nor in a citizenship act, the company is not a citizen. So these are its disadvantages. Case law. State Trading Corporation of India Limited versus CTO. So the State Trading Corporation of India incorporated under Companies Act. So what happened in this was the owners were president and his two secretaries. So what they wanted was they wanted to claim citizenship for their company, claiming that uh, it is held by citizens. So, so that is why a company is a citizen. But the Supreme Court held that it is not a citizen, as it is not in Constitution or Citizenship Act. It is not considered as a citizen. So these are advantages and disadvantages of a company. The next is the kinds of a company. So what are the kinds of a company? So we have different heads like on basis of incorporation. First, what are the kinds of company on basis of incorporation? First, we have a royal charter company. So royal charter is nothing but by the authorization of a sovereign, by the authorization of crown or a king, if anyone creates a company, it is called a royal charter company. The next is a statutory company by a special act of parliament. If anyone creates a company, it is called as a statutory company. Example is LIC. The next is a registered company. So registered under Companies Act 2013 or registered under Companies Act 1956. It is called as a registered company. So this was on the basis of incorporation. Next is on basis of a liability of members. So on basis of a liability, what liability if a person holds on basis of that company is classified as limited liability by shares. 
section 2 clause 22 so if the company is limited by shares then it is limited by share it is a company limited by shares the next is limited by guarantee so while create a company there is a guarantor and he guarantees to a certain amount that if a company goes into loss i will pay this much amount then it is a limited by guarantee company limited by guarantee then we have unlimited liability company so as the name suggests there is no limitations in liability if the company goes into loss then the member will have to pay through their own pockets The next is liable up to extent of the interest okay then uh, next is on basis of number of members section 3 of the company's act 2013 classifies company on basis of number of members so if there are seven or more members it is called as public companies then if there are two or more members it is called as private company and if there is only one person in the company it is called as one person company the next is on basis of a domicile so on basis of domicile we have first a foreign company so the company is registered under india but it is situated outside of india then it is called as a foreign company the next is indian company it is registered under company act 2013 and is also situated in india so these were the kinds of company next i will take in next video